Jennifer, do you think Didi is guilty? After video of Jennifer Lopez attending one of Diddy's parties went viral, she sued him for $150 million. They've already had some notorious legal issues in the past. During the late 1990s and early 2000s, when they were romantically involved, a number of high-profile incidents occurred, including their participation in the nightclub shooting. You no, know Cassie is involved in the federal case. But what about the other women? Could they be drawn into the federal case somehow? Former CEO of Death Row Records, Sej Knight, recently stoked rumors once again over the possible link between Jennifer Lopez's legal issues and Diddy's legal woes. Knight said that Lopez's presence on compromising tapes may have played a role in her rumored breakup with Ben Affleck. Former record executive Suge Knight suggested that Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck's divorce was triggered by Lopez's appearance in tapes the FBI seized during a raid on Sean Diddy Combs' property. He believes the FBI allegedly handed Ben Affleck tapes from the raid that implicate J-Lo in questionable activity. Jennifer Lopez and her management team were reportedly on high alert holding crisis talks to strategize in case she gets entangled in the ongoing criminal investigation surrounding her ex, Sean Diddy Combs. Over 100 people have come forward to tell the prosecutors about their encounters with Diddy, which is shocking. These people, many of whom were apparently forced into quiet, are now coming out and supporting the grave accusations that have already been made against him. Those, the enablers who enabled this conduct behind closed doors, we will pursue this matter no matter who the evidence implicates. These brave victims who have stepped forward deserve nothing less. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming, people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants. Turning now, where two law firms held a news conference today saying they're representing more than 100 alleged victims who accused Sean Puffy Combs assault. Now, this is just the latest in the many, many cases pending against the rap mogul who is still behind bars on federal charges. Now, during today's news conference in Texas, attorneys are asking for more potential victims to come forward. The conduct we will describe today occurred over more than 20 years. Unexpectedly, a Diddy family member has said that his former girlfriend Cassie made an all-out offer of $30 million to settle her lawsuit against him out of court. Despite the substantial financial stake, the source claims that Diddy turned down the offer. From your own family member and sources about what people should feel is a reasonable allegation. What people should feel is a reasonable allegation? I mean, look, this person has been, Diddy has been uh, dealing with a lot of drugs. For about 15 years, he's been dealing with a world where he is surrounded by enablers. A lot of people have told me the folks who might say no to him have been pushed out of the circle, out of the entourage, and he's surrounded by enablers and people who won't say no to him and people who won't say, hey, let's rethink that decision. Anybody who isn't uh, supporting his every whim and instinct is out. So he's surrounded by people, just yes, men and women. This includes his attorneys. Because when Cassie came to him and said, hey, I'll be silent if you give me $30 million, he didn't believe her. He didn't take seriously his entitlement and his lack of respect for her was so much. And he's like, she's not going to challenge me. She's not going to do anything. I'm not afraid of her. And there should have been somebody who could say, hey, this is a very good deal. Do you know what she's going to say? Do you know what impact that's going to have? 30 million is nothing for you. This article adds another level of intricacy to Cassie and Diddy's court struggle by implying that settlement talks were happening behind closed doors. We, we know what happened and we hope, you know, that it all turns out the way it's supposed to You had to be disturbed by a report in the New York paper yesterday. Yeah. It said an eyewitness <laughs> along 8th Avenue as your car drove by saw a female hand right. throwing a gun out of the car. You're the only female it. in the car. You don't want to talk about it? You very confident that Puffy will be found innocent in this yes. trial? Yes, I will. You're going to testify? If they need. But you haven't you been know, asked I yet. haven't been asked yet. So. It's a difficult.
Jennifer Lopez has stated in earlier interviews that she thought Diddy would be found not guilty in the 1999 nightclub shooting case, despite Diddy's ability to avoid conviction in that case, reflecting a nuanced romantic and legal drama-filled connection between them. As you guys know right now, Jennifer Lopez is also being blasted and called out everywhere because of the Diddy situation. As you guys know, years and years and years ago, they used to date. JLo was also in trouble because of a certain incident that happened with Diddy. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm sure of it. Well, this new video is circulating and check it out. Buck says Ben Affleck knew this was all about to go down and that JLo was about to be indicted along with all the rest of them. Ooh. And he said, I'm not going down for what you did in the 90s. So yeah, people are talking about this and pretty much is what she's saying is she thinks that Ben Affleck divorced J-Lo because of her history with Diddy. And Ben knew like all this stuff was about to go down and he's like, yo, I'm not going to be married to a woman who's connected to this, so peace out. Her public position on the matter is currently being revisited as she attempts to distance herself from the current disputes surrounding Diddy Lopez's involvement in Diddy's life at the time. Her arrest alongside Diddy further complicates her attempts to get out of his most recent legal troubles. It is also unclear to what extent Lopez's previous relationship with Diddy will affect her current efforts to maintain her public image. Blackmail, violence, to rule essentially over a criminal enterprise. While Combs is alleged to have involvement with illegal guns and drugs, the indictment really focuses mostly on his activities or alleged activities, especially so-called freak-offs. Those are the sometimes hours long performances that prosecutors say women were allegedly forced to participate in workers. That Combs would sometimes participate, sometimes watch while he pleasured himself, filmed the whole thing. This is what the indictment alleges. Now, currently Combs is at the Metropolitan Detention Center, the MDC out in Brooklyn, New York. In a strange twist, he's in the same area of the jail as Sam Bankman Freed, the crypto scammer accused of bilking millions from his FTX clients. Now, one of Combs' lawyers told people that Combs, while he's locked up, he's focused, he's very strong. He's also reportedly been able to be visited by family members while he awaits trial. A number of women have come forward with allegations that Diddy forced them to perform degrading acts against their will. These claims are a part of a larger body of accusations that depict Diddy's allegedly deeply disturbing pattern of behavior in which women were coerced into complying by manipulation or threat. Making much of a public statement so that the indictment speaks for itself. So tell me, what are prosecutors claiming? Prosecutors are claiming that Combs abused, threatened, and coerced women around him for the purpose of furthering his He also used his employees and others close to him in his sphere to cover up his conduct and actually engage in other crimes, like arson, which is quite serious. It's incredibly serious, and it's far broader than we anticipated when these raids began. So what exactly is Sean Combs charged with? Combs is charged with racketeering, trafficking, and trafficking over state lines to engage in And what do these specific charges tell you? These specific charges signal a criminal enterprise. It means that Combs is not the only one involved. Prosecutors have stated, among other startling things, that Diddy coerced female workers into dangerous circumstances in order to fulfill his lust for attention. This accusation is a part of a larger story in which it was claimed that Diddy used his position of authority at work for personal gain. Could the gun case be brought back up in the federal case when it comes to racketeering? Rodney Little Rod Jones, the music producer, claimed in his lawsuit that Combs used Jennifer Lopez to bring the gun into the nightclub that night. Here's what attorney Krista Ramey had to say about J-Lo possibly being brought into the federal case. We don't really know the full extent of their roles. I mean, when you think back to the 90s, was it the nightclub um, situation with um, J-Lo and Shine and, um, and Sean Combs? You know, there was really no, uh, you know, real charges that came from that. Shine, I did I think went to jail for a couple of years. No one was really charged for shooting the victim that was like shot in the face. Uh, you know, we don't know what people held um, in terms of after the fact, helping cover up things. You know, I think that there was probably criminal conspiracies that happened. And I, I believe that there could potentially be as other victims testify about the emotional and physical toll Diddy's acts inflicted on them, these accusations will probably be crucial in the next judicial processes and throw a shadow on Diddy's public persona. 
Will anyone who helped Diddy face additional legal repercussions as a result of these recent revelations regarding his behavior? Violation I have experienced during the assault has had lasting effect on my body, has an ongoing health problems and complications. The combination of physical and emotional pain has created a cycle of suffering from which it is so hard to break free. I want to continue on this journey towards recovery and healing. I'm glad that he is locked up, but that's a temporary feeling of relief. Gan transaction the allegations made by Diddy's former bodyguard that he has incriminating video of other celebrities, including international figures like Prince Deal, have fooled the controversy. Deal suggests that Diddy kept the tapes as leverage, a tactic he allegedly used to maintain control and silence others. Diddy. Yeah. There's a lot of crazy things that's going on with yeah. the, this story, Diddy, right? I mean, a lot of people are calling him the, the, the Epstein of the music, the Hollywood world, the, uh, you know, uh, business, the, what do you call it, the entertainment world. I read this story and I want to kind of get your thoughts on this here. So here's a story. Sean Diddy Combs, former bodyguard, claims music mogul had tapes, politicians and princes out there. And we'll play this clip in a minute. Gene Deal, who was present the night before Notorious B.I.G. Biggie was fatally shot in 1997, made the sensational comments during an interview with Art of Dialogue YouTube channel. And here's what he had to say. Go for it, Rob. After finding out he was recording everything. But not only celebrities, not only celebrities. I don't think it's only celebrities going to be sure. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. Uh-oh. He also had a couple of preachers in there. Oh, damn. <laughs> Is he talking about who I think he's talking about? Oh, uh, you think? Is he? Hallelujah. Cat Williams commented on that. Cat Williams definitely brought him on a preacher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what preacher that is? I don't. How, uh, okay. Uh, May, well, you don't know the preacher that was I'll seen with Diddy at one of the parties that Cat Williams says, I don't care whether you're T.D. Jakes, Jakes or oh. Diddy. Oh, yeah. So, he, was, he was the coming out in 2024. Listen, again, this yeah. is allegedly. That's, that's what, what he's saying. saying. Your thoughts on this story here. So it wasn't just this guy that was saying it. Lil Rod, former producer, filed the lawsuit and he said every room in Diddy's mansions were wired with cameras. And he had some of the footage, he had some of the pictures, and he displayed those in the lawsuit that came out. And this was used for blackmail material. They'd bring in these people. A lot of these people were also aspiring young artists in the music industry and then these parties were sponsored by motown records ceo universal records ceo this goes all the way to the top and so you get these people in compromising situations the drinks were laced the videotapes were hot and then at the end of the day you wake up the next morning oh, what did i do and then they have compromising material on you and then they can guide your career they could kill your career but they got you and it wasn't just people in the music business as you said there were athletes there were celebrities there were politicians people from the royal family and we were also told by the former bodyguard that diddy was an fbi informant Whoa. so he was a snitch and was feeding information to the feds and we don't know what that means we haven't been able to confirm it but even little rod said it's not just like epstein it could be worse than jeffrey epstein now let me ask you this when you're when you're seeing something like that do you think um you know how somebody is making money for you you can't lose when additional information about their common past becomes available jennifer lopez's choice to sue diddy may have been a calculated effort to defend herself Lopez may have been trying to dissociate herself from Diddy's legal issues and save her reputation. Affleck actually recently uh, walked away from JLo because these allegations were coming out. And isn't there even some uh, concern that uh, or proof that Pastor T.D. Jakes? Well, I'm getting right there. So there's this big list that Diddy said, I'm not going down alone. Because Cat Williams went on a podcast a while back, and Cat Williams, who is a well-known comedian uh, in the uh, black community for a long time, he went on a podcast and basically just regurgitated all this information that was just so valid. And he said, all these people, he said, you got God on one side, and then you got the other side. And he said, the other side, they're all going down in 2024. And he mentioned that he was offered $50 million for separate.
separate times to join in with these Diddy parties to basically be sodomized, and he turned it down every time. To help his career. To help his career, to bring his career to the next level. Prosecutor working with Diddy may not be acting alone, as his expanding list of legal troubles has lately shown. It is claimed that some of Diddy's closest friends are helping to facilitate or hide his contentious actions. Diddy's present legal issues involve several accusations, such as physical misbehavior, coercion, and manipulation. I would love to hear from Fondworth Bentley in the middle of all this Diddy shit. I can only imagine what he saw and experienced himself working so closely with Diddy. If you don't remember Fondsworth or don't know who he is, he was Diddy's former stylist and became known for carrying around an umbrella wherever Diddy went. Allegedly, Diddy hired Fondsworth to clean up his image right before he was in a lot of PR mess, especially around the time where he was dating JLo. So getting a stylist, changing his look was part of his rebrand. But Fondsworth definitely got out of Diddy's shadow, he became his own person, carrying Umbrella's iconic and cool somehow, he even dabbled in the music game himself, and even has some songwriting credits. But then he just completely disappeared, and it's been alleged that it's of course connected to Diddy. Diddy allegedly treated this man like a slave, pretty much dehumanized him in any way that you can think possible, and he just wanted to get away from it all. Since leaving Hollywood behind, he did get married in 2010. He's also a father of two kids, and I'm hoping he's really happy. Lawsuits from women alleging they were the victims of horrifying misbehavior during his infamous parties ignited the scandal, which was then followed by allegations from former workers and associates detailing Diddy's poisonous behavior. Rumors have surfaced suggesting that Ben Affleck's discomfiture about Jennifer Lopez's previous relationship with Diddy was a contributing factor in their recent breakup. Fonsworth Bentley as a long-standing member of Diddy's inner circle, the former personal assistant and makeup artist is reported to have had tight ties to Diddy throughout the height of his success. Will anyone close to Diddy, like Frank Bentley, be asked to tell what they know about his past? Bentley is alleged to have observed many of the behind-the-scenes incidents that are now part of the scandal. Well, I guess J-Lo's mama really knew best. Apparently, it has surfaced that J-Lo's mama was never a fan of her and Puffy. Apparently, there was this time that J-Lo was on the Wendy Williams show, and her mom was in the audience, and Wendy asked J-Lo about it. She asked her about, you know, ever rekindling that flame, and then you see J-Lo looking at her mom, who's clearly not happy about it and they're kind of like mouthing stuff like i told you he's done he's out also apparently this one detective derek parker recall recall this time when guadalupe who's jayla's mom showed up to the police station in search of her daughter her mom was like yelling in spanish she was really mad at jennifer and she heard and parker heard her say i told you not to get involved with lopez was released from custody after spending 14 hours in jail because this is when her and puffy were at some club those were fired people fled the scene, police chase ensued, involved in those two getting arrested. At the time, J-Lo went on to describe her past relationship as saying, I was in a relationship with Puff where I was totally crying, crazy, going nuts. It really took my whole life in a tailspin. I never caught him cheating, but I just knew. He'd say he was going to a club for a couple hours and then never come back that night. Guadalupe Rodriguez, the mother of Jennifer Lopez, reacted angrily when questioned about her daughter's previous relationship with Diddy during an appearance on The Wendy Williams Show. She said that she had always advised Jennifer not to get involved with him, implying that she had long-standing reservations about Diddy's character. That's it for today's video, stay tuned until next time.